Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining and welcome to the BioAfrica Convention. This is the fourth annual uh, BioAfrica Convention hosted by Africa Bio with partners. My name is Legetani Leslie Mabasa. I am an Acting General Manager at Africa Bio, and I'm going to be facilitating this session. It is a case study um, at Tequini Municipality and Africa Bio Partnership. They have developed a seed nursery that is going to be um, useful to farmers. So today we are going to talk about this farming model, the use of biotechnology, and how is it going to assist the farmers around Etequini. Um, welcome again. And before we start, I would like to introduce um, the panel speakers people who will be taking us through different uh, presentations. And at the end, we'll be requesting everyone to engage with us. You will be texting us your questions, and then we'll be able to have a discussion at the end of the session. The first person that I would like to introduce um, from the city of Etequini, or municipality, that is in West Deben, we do have Mr. Miss Kumla Jali. She is our investment uh, liaison advisor and she facilitates the investment project into the Etequini municipality. Uh, welcome, Ms. Pumla. And then the second person that we do have, we have uh, Ms. Nelisue Gumede. It's an acting program planner at the agribusiness. She will be the one giving us the um, the, uh, the, the, the context from the agribusiness side of uh, this project. Again, from um, Etequini, we do have Ms. Sikolisiwe Mwango. She's a horticulturist at um, North Thin Agri Hub. She will be giving us the agronomic uh, part, aspects on how the project was done, as well as the challenges. Uh, that will also include the capacity in terms of training of the farmers or of the other horticulturists, as well as the people who have the know-how to go on with this project uh, from this point. We do have a speaker, Ms. Philippas Stein from the ARC. He is the plant breeder manager. He has been working on um, plant breeding the rest of his career. So he will be the one giving us the more insight on um, the uh, tissue culture technique and how uh, the, the cultivars are developed. Excuse me. Again, we'll also have our last speaker, Ms. Jabumbele. She is from the company called Procon and slash Preto uh, Potato SA. They are the ones who deal with the issues of compliance as well as the issues on the market access. I would also I'll like to remind you to engage with us. Please, whenever the presenters present, have your questions, and then you can send them to us. You can text us. At the end of all the presentations, we will have the time to look into our questions. Before I hand over to the first uh, speaker, of which uh, I will be starting with Ms. Pumla Jali from uh, Invest Deben Unit, I would like to give you a bit of a background around this project. We all know that uh, potatoes are very important and uh, they contribute a lot to the GDP in this country. But we do have a challenge now in the seed production. It has been declining since uh, 1994. We had around 5,000 seed uh, producers, but at the moment we are sitting at uh, less than 500. So that is a serious challenge. So Africa Bio and Etiquin had uh, this intervention of um, trying to assist farmers develop their own seeds. Instead of uh, buying the seeds as a major constraint to uh, potato production, the city decided to do its own or to make its own seeds. So Africa Bio, in collaboration with the municipality, develop the nursery that is going to be a sustainable model of producing potato seeds to the municipality. 
farmers are going to be able to tap into uh, potato cultivation uh, through this nursery and it's going to lower their cost in terms of getting the potato seeds from uh, the other retailers. So this is a sustainable farming model that has been that we are start trying to start to test and so far it has been going well because the first batch of seeds are produced they are being tested for the virus and bacteria so that they can be certified for them to be used by our local farmers thank you um miss pumla jali i would like you to have some opening words from the municipality perspective particularly in verse 7. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you very much, Leslie. Um, good morning to everyone um, in South Africa and um, good day to everyone elsewhere in the world. Um, as Leslie said, I'm Kona Jali. I work for a unit in the municipality known as Invest Durban Units. This unit um, is a part of a few units that fall under the economic development and planning cluster of the city. Now, some of you may be asking why a unit um, centered around investment promotion and facilitation would want to get involved in an agricultural based initiative. And the reason for that is as a unit, um, we have the Durban investment promotion strategy and the priority sector is um, agri-processing and then also life sciences, which is why we see value in our partnership with Africa Bio NPC and also supporting the Bio Africa Convention. One of the pillars of our mandates as a unit is investor aftercare. And within investor aftercare, we have business linkages. And the work being done around the potato demonstration trial will allow us to do just that. Link our local farmers, our local commercial farmers with multinationals. Um, we all know uh, multinationals that are involved in the food industry. And to then have our small micro and medium enterprises supported and feeding into value chains of um, these MNCs or multinational um, corporations. This will allow us to see job creation and also meaningful change in our city. Agriculture is only getting more and more important as populations um, increase and food security is very, very important. And uh, we know this now definitely because of uh, the pandemic that we're currently in. So that is why we as a, depart as a department have supported this work. The potato demonstration trials is only one part of our partnership with Africa Bio. The other two are the Bio Africa Convention. And then lastly, it's the Bio Economy Strategy. As Etegwini, we are a very well resourced municipality. And when we were workshopping in, um, internally, we looked to, set, to see where in the city can we get support for um, this program. And our sister departments of agroecology and agribusiness got on board um, to provide their expertise in the agricultural space and also making available their assets and, most importantly, their network of farmers. In April this year, we launched a very successful uh, farmer training program where we had our partners, Mr. Philippa Stain, um, Jabu, and also our other partners from Potato SA um, workshopping farmers around the opportunity of growing our very own Durban variety of potatoes. Um, potatoes, as we know, are a very high value crop. So should this trial work, we will see real meaningful change happening within our city and have our local people benefit from the economic opportunities that then arise. So then we see how foreign direct investments can also play a role is by having um, the business linkages opportunities happening. Uh, we are as a city currently focused on rebuilding initiatives and we will use agriculture to also support in the rebuild um, efforts. Thank you so much, Leslie. Um, back to you in the studio. For such uh, remarks from Invest Deben, uh, it is indeed going to be a project that benefits farmers, as you indicated, and 
possibly we are going to have a foreign investment interest in order to upscale this um, project. Uh, without any waste of time, I would like to uh, invite our second speaker into the podium. She will be talking about her experiences regarding the production, the first production that was made at the Northern Agri Ecology Hub, as well as the capacity that has been built in terms of training, as well as how is she seeing these things ups unfolding in terms of upscaling in looking into the issues of agronomies, agronomic aspects, as well as the capacity that they have as a, within the Etequini uh, municipality. Uh, from North, uh, North Thin Agri Ecology, I would like to call Ms. Sikoliwe Mwango. Thank you. Over to you, Sikoliwe. Mm, good day, everyone. Uh, my name is Sikoliwe Mwango. I'm a horticulturist based at the North Thin Agri Hub. Uh, North Thin is one of seven hubs that are under a Tegunu municipality agro, agroecology unit. Uh, North Dean is where the project was based. Uh, the project started on the 1st of February, where we started plant, planting the seedlings, 8,000 seedlings in our tunnel, uh, in partnership with Africa Bio. We planted those seed, those plants, uh, the first week of February, then we managed to harvest the first week of June. Uh, we did have some challenges uh, throughout the, the, the demonstration trials where we experienced uh, pests and diseases, uh, poor drainage, uh, yes, and, and others. Uh, in terms of, of training, this project, we, we benefited a lot because we, Africa Bio conducted a, um, Farmers Information Day, two Farmers Information Day, first one for the horticulturist, and the second one were not for the small scale farmers, where we were trained on how to work with tissue culture plants. We were trained how to to, to, to plant potatoes and everything. Also, the farmers benefited a lot because now that we're gonna deploy the seeds, they will know how to, to, to plant the seeds and, and how to, to treat the seeds and, and, and et cetera. Uh, we planted two varieties of potatoes. Uh, we managed to harvest 7,000, almost 18,000 potato seeds, which now are now stored in our, one of our hubs at Umbumbulu, cold storage. Uh, yeah, this project has been very beneficial to us as agroecology. We are very grateful for the opportunity from Moetegoni Municipality and from Africa Bio as well. We also looking forward for the partnership and more learning in future. And we also have interest to upscale the project through all our seven hubs around a Teguin region where we will plant more potatoes because as we know the, the potato seeds are very expensive and the production costs are, are very high. So this project brings the alternative for the farmers to have the alternative seed and these seeds are verified by Agricultural Research Council uh, from our side as agroecology, we are very grateful from Eteguini and from our partners, Africa Bio. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Mwango, for your uh, presentation. Um, I also appreciate the fact that you highlighted uh, the sustainability of the project and how it benefited you as an agri-hub and how it can be upscaled to other hubs, and how farmers got the information on potato production. So basically, we are going to be 
uh, establishing something that has the potential of upscaling in all angles. As you indicated that even the cultivars that were used were successfully, um, were used uh, successfully. Now, um, I want us to look into the agribusiness angle and uh, we are going to be going to the other wing of um, the municipality, of which we will be talking to Ms. Nelsiwe Gumede. She will give us the context on the agri side of, uh, on the agri context of this project. How is it going to be, how is the model going to be viable on, on their site? Ms. Uh, Nelisue Gumede, please take us through. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our BioAfrica convention. Uh, as Uu Leslie has said, I'm Nelisue Gumede. I'm the acting program planner for Agribusiness Department. Agribusiness Department is the department that falls under business support, market, and tourism unit in Etegwini. We are servicing SMMEs in agribusiness agri value chain. And we are aiming and we are aiming at growing the economy by improving production of the, the productivity of the SMMEs. We as agribusiness, we have the approved uh, agribusiness master plan that was approved by the Council of Etewini. Uh, that is approving or proposing five commodities that agribusiness will work with in the next uh, 10 years. The commodities are uh, poultry, vegetables, uh, picari, sheep, and cannabis. Those are the five commodities that are approved in our master plan for agribusiness. Uh, as agribusiness, we provide services like business advice, incubation support, access to market, and then business planning services. Those are the services that we're providing. So we are very um, happy to partner with BioAfrica for this potato trial demonstration. Our farmers have already attended the training whereby they were trained in, the, with, in terms of the potato seeds. The benefits that will happen and then the benefit to our farmers, the farmers will be able to unlock market because when they have the good quality seed, obviously they will produce quality. Then they will be able to unlock a market. Secondly, we'll have, as Etewin, we'll have our own Etewin certified seed. We all know that once we have the certified seed, we'll have a good quality produce. So the farmers were also in educated and then they were also share, information was shared with them in terms of knowledge and skills for the potato SA. So we're hoping that um, the potato trial will assist the agribusiness department in terms of making sure that the commercial farmers, they have a sustainable market. Then obviously will unlock uh, the job opportunities uh, then also will target also improve the food security and then farmers will also have the sustainable market that will benefit them in terms of the economical part of it. So as Acre Business, we are in support and then we'll continue to benefit through our farmers for this high value crop uh, seed. As we all know that the potato is the most important one in terms of the uh, it's part of the high value crops and it's being used almost every day. And then we're also going to get the market for it. So those are the services that are being done by agribusiness. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Nelly Siwe, uh, for such remarks from um, uh, I, I forgot the from the agribusiness side. And um, the, the remarks are well re uh, received. Thank you so much. Um, I would like us to look into the technical aspects now on seed production, uh, the potato pipeline. 
That's where we are going to look into how is these things developed scientifically, how biotechnology plays a role in seed production, as well as how is it going to be sustainable, a sustainable model in terms of upscaling. Um, I would like to hand over to uh, Mr. Philippas Stein. Philippas, over to you. Thank you very much, Leslie. It's great to be here, and thank you for the opportunity to, to, to be able to share this with you guys. Okay, without further ado, guys, if we look at this project, I mean, it's an immensely important project for me. If we look at the um, worldwide stats, and we look at the worldwide map that you see there on your program, on your screens at the moment, you will see a lot of potato production all over the world. Now, you will see that those colors represent, if you look at the blue spots, that's the highest yields that you get, and then the red and so on. So if you look at South Africa, you really see that on the world floor, on a world platform, we're not really shaping very well with regards to potato productions in volumes. Now, if you look at the the biggest countries in the world doing potato production, you're looking at China, India, Russia, Ukraine. If you look at Africa and you come closer to home, the biggest producers in Africa is Algeria, Egypt, Malawi, and then only South Africa, followed by Rwanda and Kenya. But all these countries that I mentioned, except South Africa, um, the bulk of their potato production is done by small-scale farmers or smaller farmers. And uh, this is the importance of this project. Now, in the, at the World Potato Conference in 2019 that was presented um, in Chile, the comment was made that the single largest problem in potato production is quality of seed. And uh, so that is the big thing hampering the smaller farmers is quality of seed. And we've also seen it with the training that we are doing, is that although the, the material is certified, people do not understand how to deal with certified or how to deal with seed and so on. So it deteriorates quite a lot. So with this project, we really want to, to get past all this and improve the seed quality of the farmers and put them in charge of the quality. Now, if you look at where do we come from, um, you will see there the first slide is a bunch of girls sitting in laminar flow cabinets doing tissue culture. So at the ARC, we have tissue culture collections. We have the potato breeding program. And the two lines that we were talking here about today is two varieties that comes from the potato breeding program, and that is being used. So these girls are trained for many years in doing potato cuttings and so on, and you can see there the tubs, and those are the tubs or the similar tubs that was uh, presented to African Bio for the productions in Etiquani. You will see there the last slide on the top row, the quality of the plants. So, why is this important? I mean, if you look at the tissue culture, and remember what we said just now is that the biggest single problem that the smaller farmer has is quality of material. So the ARC is in a position, and it's been housing material for many years under sterile conditions. And we started an assurance system. The certification system in South Africa, although it is a very good system and it served our industry very well, it is not accessible to everybody. It is accessible to larger farmers, planting in five hectare blocks and larger, and it's not everywhere in the country. So the ARC said, but how can we change this? How can we make this easier? So we started an assurance system and the material that uh, Leslie was talking to about being tested is at the moment with me. And as soon as it's sprouted, it will be tested at one of our sister institutes and they test for a number of viruses. Now, normally in the commercial productions, before, if you look at the tissue culture plants, the tissue culture plants going out to a client is tested for a number of varieties. It's uh, the viruses. It's five viruses that it's tested for, and it's also tested for bacterial wilt, and then also some of the soft rot bacteria. And then only if that is then clean, then the material would be supplied. And you see there in the left-hand corner, the facility at Itikweni where they planted the plants um, in, in, in trays, and that went through the season, and I visited the, the planting a couple of times, and the guys went through a learning curve, and from now on also they can just improve. But yet, um, with this learning curve, uh, what Mrs. Pulwani said, uh, uh, no, it was Mrs. Nabu said, they harvested 18,000 tubers. And I'll come back to the 18,000 tubers just now. So they did a very excellent job in uh, doing this. 
and they did it with the two, two varieties that the ARC supplied them. And the key here is the assurance system. So we need to, and this is why it's so nice that the guys from Africa Bio understand that you need to test the material constantly for the diseases and the viruses so that you are sure that the material carrying on is good quality. Okay, where to from now? So we've harvested the mini tubers. That will be planted in the next season in a field on that lie, similar to that was a block of mini tubers I planted at Otsustrum a, a year or two ago. And you can see the size of those plants. So just because you plant a mini tuber doesn't mean that it needs to be the smaller plants. They grow to the same extent. The only difference is that mostly a mini tuber would form one or two stems, but they will go through the same processes, harvested, sorted. And then the next thing that we would like to introduce is if you look at the cost drivers of seed, the big cost drivers is transport and then storage. Now we've done some research and I know that um, Inaka Foster did some work um, in KZN as well with these diffuse light stores where the guys stored material for a number of months and you can achieve similar results by storing it in diffuse light stores than storing in cold rooms. So that takes care of the two biggest cost drivers in potato seed is transport, storage, and you can work from there. So the, the production after the mini tubers that they've harvested now is basically represented on the screen. Okay, if we go to where are we going from here now? Okay, so what is important is that the farmers or the person in charge of this now needs to separate the different seed pipelines. So it's not just a once-off event. You will see on this spreadsheet, you'll see the season one, two, up to six. And every season you start with a mini tuber production. So if this mini tuber production is once a year, so once a year you'll plant mini tubers. And then those mini tubers goes over to a first field multiplication. The ones there harvested goes over to a second field and a third field and so it carries on. So on the right-hand table, I've showed you the multiplication rates. And remember, this will change from farmer to farmer and the decisions made by the farmer uh, regarding the holdback and so on. So what I've said there is that when you start with a 250 mini tubers um, and you plant 250 mini tubers and you keep everything back that you harvest, and this is based on 30 tons per hectare, you would be able to plant 0.04 hectares. Now, if you take that 0.4 hectares, now the farmer can decide, listen, yeah, I want to sell the larger seed off, but I want to retain the smaller seed for the next multiplication cycle. So if we then keep back 50% of that seed, he would be able to plant 0.2 hectares. The same argument when he harvests, how much do I want to hold back? How much do I want to harvest? So if he keeps back 50% again, he would be able to plant one hectare. And then you'll see on the right hand side the number of bags of seed that he is able to sell every season. But obviously now because he's kept back some or he's, he's kept back the portion, there's also wear potatoes that he can sell. So that can also start financing his next seed production. But the important thing here is that mini tubers needs to be planted every year. So we need to supply tissue culture plants for the mini tuber facility every year. Now, coming back to the figures that they've achieved in Etiquene um, at 18,000 tubers. So now you can see that if you have 18,000 tubers, the guys can already plant almost half a hectare with the seed that they've harvested there. So that will make a huge difference. So from a half a hectare, they would be able to plant between three and four hectares. And so the sums continue depending on the ratios. And this is why this is one of the... Mm, the best methods for farmers to reduce their seed cost is by using a system similar to this. And this advantage that the guys in South Africa has is because these seed will now be tested on every cycle of multiplication to see what is the virus content. Now, after the first field multiplication, we normally only test for potato virus Y and potato leaf roll virus because those are the two that really affects the yields. At the end, with potato leaf roll virus more drastic, and we will obviously also test for bacterial wilt because it's a, it can be a crucial disease in South Africa, limiting production for farmers. So basically from 
the first field planting that I call the FP or zero, uh, with the mini tubers, the FP zero to the first three productions, there could be a big change. But what is important here to remember as well is the local production of varieties. And that is why I put that little blocky in there for potato breeding. And this is quite dear to my heart because I'm a potato breeder. And a week or two ago, I had to do a, a radio talk show on dumping of potatoes in South Africa through frozen fries and the importance of this. And what I also said there is that as dumping of chips is important in South Africa in protecting our farmers by, by trying to avoid um, this importation, so also varieties. If you look at potatoes in South Africa, about 90% is um, bred or, or grown from foreign varieties. So what the effect is that it really puts an air damper on local production of local varieties. And it's not just potatoes, it's dry beans, it's tomatoes, it's anyone. So, and this is the importance of this variety of, of this program for me is that supporting South African varieties, keeping the money in South Africa to plow back into the research, into the breeding of varieties, developing of farmers and so on. And I would like to congratulate everybody involved in this project for having that, that visionary uh, vision to, to do it this way. And that strengthens us at the ARC again to breed better varieties and keep on improving what we can give to the, um, the local people in South Africa and Sadiq and maybe the rest of Africa. So this project for us is pretty important. And uh, I would like to thank the guys for the opportunity to be involved in this. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Stain. Uh, for your presentation. In case you have just joined, I will just like to at least highlight what we have um, already spoken about. When looking into the potato value chain, we have just had a presentation by Stain now. He was talking about the seed development. But again, we also had um, a presentation from uh, the agronomic site, uh, our horticulturist, Ms. Koliwe Mngango, gave us some insight regarding that. And again, uh, from Invest Deben, uh, Pumla indicated on how this project can attract some other uh, partners and investments on board and upscale uh, this project. So we also heard from the Etequini, the agribusiness site, uh, their context regarding this um, project. So uh, there will be a slight change within our program uh, because one of our speakers is uh, having some challenges. And when I assess the situation, they might not be able to make it they were supposed to talk about uh, the compliance. Potato industry is well regulated. That's why uh, the Etiquini, and in collaboration with Africa Bio, we made sure that we involve all the key role players within this project to make sure that we produce seeds that are certified. We have the ARC to be giving us the varieties, the local varieties for that matter. I'm glad, Stain, you touch on the issue of uh, dumping uh, that has been, uh, the potato dumping that has been on news. Uh, I think it is encouraged to our small scale farmers around Etagwene to support our local initiative. Let's grow our own, our local varieties instead of uh, getting something that we don't even have much information on. And again, let's try not to be. Um, taking random potatoes and make them seeds because we can't trace uh, their genetic information. There is something that is called a polyploid in case uh, Stain might explain on that on his uh, closing remarks. So for now, as a way forward, like I indicated or like Pumla indicated uh, before, that we have made sure that the value chain, the potato value chain is covered industry, potato essay,
the issues of training, we're not just giving farmers chubas, but we train them. And again, we're looking into the issues of job creation by upscaling this. We're looking into the issues of capacity building as well as technology transfer. So I would like to, I would like us as a way forward to look into some of the questions that have been raised uh, by some of our listeners, people who have joined us uh, virtually. I've got one question that is directed to Stain. Uh, Stain, they are asking under which conditions are the harvested tubers are supposed to be stored? Um, if you may respond to that question, please. It very much depends on um, on what's going to happen with those potatoes um, after harvesting. And it's a very important question because what I've experienced in the past, um, we've, we've, we've um, helped a number of government uh, agencies to assist small-scale farmers. And quite often the seed, but by the time that it gets to the smaller farmer, is actually of a very poor quality, although it's certified. And remember, the certification looks at at the day when it was harvested and it's been packed and then it gets certified. So it gets certified at a very early stage in the life of that seed. And the certification system does really a very good job. I mean, you get an inspector, he goes and look at the stuff and he puts the tag on. But now the problem starts afterwards and that is also why people should not just take any potatoes and, and plant it as you commented just now. It's because the way potatoes are stored long term is it effect it has an effect of the quality. So although the potatoes, when it was certified originally, was of an excellent quality, because it was stored too long or it was stored under the wrong conditions, the quality of the seed is not very good when you plant it. And then farmers also need to be trained in when they look at potato seed to have a grasp of is this stuff all right to plant? So if you take seed, for instance, and you want to store it, so most of the seed in South Africa is stored in cold rooms at three degrees Celsius. But when cold room starts breaking down and you get fluctuations in temperatures that have an effect on your physiological age of seed. So we also make, need to make a distinction between physiological age and chronological age. So I'm talking about how old, how old is the potatoes due to the treatment or how long has it been stored? And the worse it's been treated in and out of stores or being packed wrong, that physiological age is speeded up. And I've seen it many times, not just with um, smaller farmers, also with previous industry in the processing that I've been dealing with, is that farmers get seed that has been stored for too long or stored under the wrong conditions and it really deteriorates. And then it's not the seed grower's fault. Although the seed grower get blamed for that, it's not the seed grower's fault. So it is important for every farmer that when he receives seed, that he needs to have a look at it. Now, okay, coming back to the, the position, what is the, the intent for the farmer? So if a farmer plants his own seed and he stores it in a facility like that diffused light sprout storage um, facility that I showed you in the slide, it's a facility that he can erect on his farm um, pretty easy to do, and you can easily store seed in that facility for, say, three, four months, allowing the seed to sprout. The seed will sprout and it will form very thick sprouts that is that is nice and strong. If you look at the industry in uh, Scotland, in, in England, they call it chip chitting. So that is a fairly common practice in, in countries that does large production, production units um, of potatoes. So if you store the potatoes under conditions where they've got enough air going through them under cold, uh, under um, controlled light conditions and so on, you can store it for quite a while. Whereas if you've got seed packed into a cold room and the temperatures fluctuate between three and eight or 10 degrees Celsius constantly, the seed in the cold room would uh, deteriorate or, or age much quicker than the seed in that. And, and the nice thing about this project is that where farmers now keep back their own seed and put it in their, their stores and walking through their, their planting and taking out stuff that is not right, 
you actually produce a farmer that is much more equipped in planting potatoes and recognizing problems. The big challenge comes in that you need to keep your pipeline separate and you need to deal with all those things separately and then get it tested every year after you've harvested. And then you should be okay. Thank you so much, Stein. Um, I would also like to add on that point that our harvested tubers are currently stored at five degrees Celsius and it's constantly monitored. We are just awaiting for the results of bacteria as well as uh, viral. If it comes certified, that's where we are going to allow them sprout and be given to our farmers. Another thing that I wanted to add at the meantime before um, I take the second question from our audience is that um, the role of uh, the pa our partners, Procon, since they were not able to give us the presentation here, is to make sure that our harvest uh, access the market. Our local varieties are able to access the market because they should be meeting uh, standards. So with them, through uh, this project, with uh, having them as partners, they were able to guide our farmers as for what will be the requirements uh, that are necessary for their potatoes to make an a first grade at the market. Again, um, I would like to take the second question from the audience. Again, it's directed to Stain. Stain, uh, the question it says, the potato price has been volatile recently and it was mentioned that one of the contributors was the climate change. How is ARC ensuring that small scale can mitigate impact of climate change? Uh, Stain, please, uh, if you can be able to answer the question. You know, if you look at fluctuations in prices, it will always fluctuate. And uh, it's because you deal with a commodity on an open market and you deal with um, supply and demand. But one thing that we must remember as well, in the breeding program, and this is why it's so important that uh, the local varieties needs to be supported, because in the local breeding program as well, we test under different conditions, and we try to release varieties that's better adapted to local varieties. Now, in general, South Africa is a pretty warm country. I've been speaking to some of my friends in Benin over the weekend about potato production in Benin. Now, their maximum temperatures goes up to about 25, 26 degrees. They've got other problems. If the fluctuation between the nights and the evenings isn't as good as it should be, because you'd really like a fluctuation of between, say, 12, 15 degrees, 25 in the day. So we in South Africa are fortunate that we have a breeding program, so we can test varieties under pretty warm conditions, under dry conditions, and so on. But for us to do that, we need support from... The local guys you know so that we have money that we can uh, expand the breeding program and and it's a pity that the industry in uh, 2012 i think it was decided to to stop funding potato breeding and that was quite a bad thing for us because it impacted directly on the breeding program so i hope with this initiative like the guys at Etiquini, that we will stimulate better incomes and the, the better realization for investment into the local breeding program. And this is the only way that we can really breed going ahead for warmer, drier conditions to try and mitigate the, the climate change. We're looking at uh, maybe a two degrees uh, increase in temperatures to the, the I think around about 10, 20 years, no, no, that's to the end of the century, if I remember correctly, but I mean, if you look at two degrees, I mean, some of these productions already maximum temperatures of around about 30 degrees and higher during summer conditions, adding two degrees makes quite a big difference. So, so to come back, we will always have the fluctuation of prices because it's driven by, by demand and supply, but we need to breed better varieties to, to, to make sure that we, we have the varieties that can deal with what is coming. What we also need to understand is that if you look at normal potato productions, and this is where smaller farmers in more remote areas has a big advantage because they can sell in the area. 
So they cut out marketing costs. They cut out transport to and back from the market and they cut out commissions from, for the market agents. So there's a lot of value in producing for these farmers in local areas that's far away from markets. Thank you so much, Stain, uh, for such. Um, I'm notified that our speaker has arrived, and I think it will only be fair to at least give her a chance uh, to address us. Um, at the meantime, we'll be looking into the third question that is coming from uh, the panel, the, the audience. Uh, it's unfortunate, Stain. The question is also uh, directed to you. It says, uh, can you explain why people shouldn't plant random potatoes? I think they are referring to the potatoes that are bought from the market. And some of the farmers, they uh, try and make it uh, start budding and then they use it as a seed. Can you quickly at least address that while we are trying to locate uh, Ms. Mbelestein? Uh, that's, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a question that's been with us for many years because, I mean, it's so easy. The old potatoes in your house started sprouting. What do you do with it? Let's plant it. And, and, and that is precisely, remember I said in the beginning of my slide production, I said if you look at the countries like China, India, Russia, Ukraine, um, even in, in, in Africa, Algeria, Egypt, Malawi, these smaller farmers keep back potatoes and plant it again. But I also said that during the World Potato Conference in 2018, 2018 they said that the, uh, the single largest problem in potato production is the quality of seed. And that is exactly what we deal with. If you go to the grocery store and you buy old seed or you keep it back from your house, is that you might know which variety it is because you just bought some potatoes. So that is the first thing that you don't know what it is. Then the second thing is that you do not know what the disease status of that seed is. And this is why our certification system is so excellent in South Africa, is that they monitor the disease status of um, potato seed. And it's the same with the assurance system that the ARC does on potato seed as well, is that we monitor that disease status because the big challenge is that the higher the disease status, the worse the seed will produce. So if you look at something, remember we talked about two viruses. We talked about potato leaf roll virus and we talked about potato virus Y. Now potato virus Y also has a variant in South Africa that can, um, and they call it potato Y necrotic, and it, it, it makes disease symptoms within tubers. Now potato leaf roll virus is that the system says that as soon as your potato leaf roll virus count gets higher than 2%, you should not be planting it. And the reason for that is that it has a direct impact on the yield of your seed. So now we even let alone all the other diseases and, and, and um, KZN is also prone to bacterial wilt quite a bit, is bacterial wilt. So if you wanna plant seed, you want to know that the seed that I'm planting is free of bacterial wilt because bacterial wilt and work that the University of Pretoria has done years back is that bacterial wilt, once you've infected your fields, it can stay in your fields for, for many, many years. I know Prohamas that work that after 10 years, they still picked it up in their, their fields. So this is why you really do not want to take random potatoes is that you don't know what the, the variety is 10 to 1. You don't know how long it's been growing, how many cycles of replications, and you definitely do not have the disease status, both the viruses and the bacteria and some of the, the fungus growing on the potatoes. So, so we have, you use your own potatoes in your multiplication system, you know you will keep them for three years and then they're out, but you know you've got new potatoes just following them with less generation. So we talk about the number of generations and you really want to restrict your generations to, th to three generations, maybe at worst four generations. So 
with when you're doing your own seed, you know where it comes from and, and you can plant it with, with uh, ease that, that the quality will be right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dane, for that. Um, I would like to give Jabu at least uh, two minutes to tell us about their role as PROCON and uh, as a representative of Potato SA to the Potato value chain. Jabu, if you can kindly um, summarize this in respect of time, uh, you have the maximum of uh, two minutes to summarize your role. Over to you. Yes, good morning, everyone. Uh, Procon is a quality assurance company that works with all the farmers after uh, after harvest. The Department of Agriculture will teach the farmers on how to plant and all of that. So after harvest, that way we take over uh, as Procon to, to, to see the quality of the product. Uh, we, we deal with all national uh, fresh produce market. There is for KZN, we've got Deben market and also uh, Peter Maritzberg market where we do inspection before the sales, before the agents decide on the price. We also do inspection on all distribution centers. There is spa distribution center, pick and pay, Woolwet, everyone that sells fresh produce around the country. We also in charge of import inspection so that if maybe there's a product that is out of season, like grapes, uh, kiwi fruit, and also uh, strawberry now and banana, we don't have enough in case that in, uh, I can say South Africa, but we only a, I'm only responsible for KZN, so that way I make arrangements for outside countries to bring whatever that is scarce in the province so that our customers and then our people for KZN they have access to quality fresh produce. Also, we do uh, training. This training, we do them on different platforms. We're training commercial farmers on all products, uh, potatoes and other fruits and other vegetables. And also we do this training for emerging farmers. We also have a group that I created on Facebook. It's called KZN Farmers of Alimi. It's called 98 emerging farmers, 98,000 emerging farmers on that group where we continue with our trainings for for, for, for vegetables or fresh produce market. So that's also one of what we're doing. We also do training on different countries. We've got Namibia. There's also one that we're doing for for, for, for Holland. And also, I'm also a, a private sampler for food experts. There is one, uh, uh, that is one of fresh produce companies in Spain where when there's a ship at Devon Harbor, and also they want to buy maybe citrus, like now we're doing citrus. They want to buy citrus from, from, from South, 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 South Africa. So I'll do the sampling so that they can see whether that fruit is okay for maybe multivitamin, uh, food colorants, or, or cosmetics, because they don't buy citrus from us to, to, to eat. They make different things for, for, for that. Uh, that's all I can say. And also, I'll be starting uh, with agribusiness at Ebony Municipality as a project manager for agribusiness starting from May next month for, for the next three years so that we can continue training these small scale farmers to become commercial farmers and make sure that they have access to to, to, to market in different platforms. So I'll be also running these projects for Etegwini Municipality and other projects for Department of Agriculture, ADA uh, and different uh, stakeholders in agricultural yeah. industry. Uh, that's the summary for that I have for my two minutes. Thank you so much, Jabo. Um, you have uh, unpacked everything out of that two minutes given to you. Mm -hmm. um, we really appreciate you tr tr uh, trying very hard to join us under circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. Uh, colleagues and all that are joining uh, this session, we are coming to an end of this session due to the issues of time. Um, but I am grateful for all the participation from you on uh, who are joining uh, live, as well as uh, whosoever was uh, presenting on this session. One thing that I would like to highlight before I hand over to Pumla to have some of the last uh, remarks is that we are having a model as uh, per the 
tightly of our uh, session. And this model as it stands, the potato value chain, it has all aspects covered. And by the look of things, uh, everything is going well so far. And it looks sustainable. So it's, I'm urging all the small scale farmers around Etiquini to engage and participate in this potato production with the understanding that we need to transform small scale farmers to be commercial. And again, there are guidelines that are developed for us to do that. And we have other partners to help us achieve that, especially the part where they have to uh, access the market with the potatoes that are grown from the certified seeds. Um, that's from my side, as well as, uh, as a representative of Africa Bio, and having uh, been a team player in this uh, project. Uh, Pumla, I will give you less than a minute to have the last remark from uh, the municipality side. Over to you. Thank you very much, Leslie, for the opportunity. Um, my closing remarks are this, is that this potato demonstration trial really shows the power of science in making development a reality, um, not only in our city, but also in our province. And I'd really encourage our other district municipalities to also get on board and learn from the work that has been done within Etiwini municipality on this project. Uh, we do know that our, our municipality doesn't have enough space for agriculture, but our district municipalities do. So there is an opportunity um, for peer learning and to see this project upscale. I do also like to thank the partnerships that's been formed through this project, both internally with our agribusiness department and agroecology unit, and the partnerships formed between ARC and then also Procon and Potato SA. Um, thank you so much to the Africa Bio team led by Leslie, and also to the young female scientists, Tendani and Nzalama, who have also played a critical role in making this project a huge success. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us this morning. And um, let's enjoy the rest of the Bio-Africa Convention over these next two days. Thank you so much. Uh, we have reached the end of our session. Enjoy the rest of Bio-Africa Convention. Thank you.